Hey, back again to Peanated Facts. Back with the boys again. You know, we got my boy Soul Toast and Cigar Loving Matt and myself, Hollywood, of course. Hey, right now we're going to talk about the NBA draft for 2021. All right. NCAA tournament is over. We know who won. Gonzaga. Hey, Logan Gonzaga. Y'all had the disappointment right there. I had it. I had it. Hey, bro, you, hey, you, you was on the verge of being right again, bro. <laughs> Look at him, they, man. They, they fumbled the bag on you, bro. They fumbled it, man. So bad. I mean, how do you fall to that much in the tournament? And then, I mean, in the well, game. I, I tell you how. That, that adrenaline dump after winning the way you won the previous game. That, exactly. It's hard to get that emotion back in you, man. Right. I think that's what happened. The way they came out so flat in that game, yeah. that let me know that they had, they had used a lot of energy just on winning that last one and how they won it with Jalen Suggs and that bank shot, like, yeah, I, I, we probably should have all predicted it, but hey, I had a feeling. I ain't gonna lie, I did have a feeling because Baylor was just playing some good ass basketball. Let's just be real. All right, babe, hey, we have the NBA draft coming up, so I'm gonna go with this top ten list real quick, guys. And this is who uh, we actually have in the top ten right now. So we got K Cunningham, Jalen Suggs, Evan Mobley, Jalen Green, Jonathan Kaminga. Both those last two guys are in the G League. Uh, we had Keon Johnson, Scotty Barnes, Kai Jones, Jalen Johnson, and Jaden Springer. So that's the top 10 right now that I, that I was able to find out about. Who out of mm-hmm. this list, in your opinion, can be that superstar at the next level? Cigar 11, Matt, bro, what you got? Uh, I zoom in on two guys that really stand out to me. That one guy we just mentioned, Jalen Suggs. I mentioned Jalen Suggs. So I got Jalen Suggs and Jalen Johnson, but Jalen's. And the reason I got those two identified for me because what I find personally important in the, in this game that we play now, Jalen Suggs, multi-sport athlete, also a hell of a football player. Most importantly, he's a combo guard in college. He'll probably translate trans, translate over to the NBA game just as well. Uh, good shooter, good ball handler, ferocious athlete, ferocious competitor. I really value that in prospects. Like, are you a true competitor? Like, you got to have that dog in you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, I, I look at a kid like Jalen Johnson because, bro, he's six foot nine, he's long as hell, and he's a ball handler. I really value wing ball handlers, man, because as you can see in the NBA, they create some matchup nightmares, dog. You can't play certain bigs on the floor when you got wings out there with that kind of length and can handle the rock like that. I think the first guy that comes to mind is uh, the, the kid from uh, the kid from New Orleans. Uh, what's his name? Uh, they, they always compare him to KD. Um, Brandon, Ingram? Brandon, Brandon Ingram. Ingram. He ain't no damn KD, of course, with KD seven feet tall. But right. Ingram's a nice player. Nice player. Nice ball handler. Smooth with the basketball. And I think that's what we're looking at with Jalen Johnson. Uh, of course, with these guys being so young, you got to give them three or four years to really develop. You know what I'm saying? to really know the game because these guys don't really know the game yet because it's their babies. But those are the really two guys I look at and I'm like, if I was an NBA team with a top two or three pick, I'll be point, I'll be looking at those guys because they, they tend to translate well, especially now where, you know, it used to be a detriment to be like a combo guard. Like, you know, old school NBA, you either had to be a damn point guard that was going to pass the ball and be efficient with the offense or you was going to be a Kobe Bryant level scorer. Like they didn't like, you know, and then, you know, Steph Curry's and, you know, the Marbury was a little bit before his time in that way, which is why Marbury, as good as he was, he's not remembered as fondly as he probably should have been because of the fact that he was really more of a combo guard. He wasn't a true point, true shooter. Uh, so that's why I like Jalen Suggs in his new NBA. I think he's going to translate quite well, man. I, I, I love combo guards in the new league. I'm with it. I'm with it. I like that pick right there. Hey, Soltos, what you saying, man? Uh, I agree with Mac with uh, both those uh, the Jalen's as he calls them. Um, I would go. I'm more intrigued with uh, since he's currently in the G League right now. I I want to see how that whole transition goes. With that's kind of the new thing. Some players. You, say, you said Jalen Green. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just the transition instead of going to college, he he goes straight into the G League just to see how the development goes because it's not. I don't I don't think the talent is the same. Well, see, that's the thing. I don't know how the talent is because of depending on which college you go to and opposed to the G League. You got some dudes been in the G League 10 years, you know, ain't never going to make it. So 
I mean, I'm intrigued to see how Jalen Green plays out, but also what you said with the combo guard with uh, Cade Cunningham from uh, Oklahoma State. He's a bigger guard. He's six foot eight, uh, LeBron size, not well height wise, not really uh, anything like that. He's a combo uh, one and two. That seems to be the way the NBA is kind of going. Uh, like with Zion, uh, now they kind of put him in a point forward role. Um, and he seems to be flourishing that way, putting up 30 points now and, and all that. I'm not saying Kate is a Zion. I don't think we have a Zion coming up in this draft. Uh, we didn't even have him last draft. Uh, Anthony Edwards and Lamelo Ball are looking great, but no one with that caliber of Zion, who is pretty much done deal, is going to be a star. Um, oh, yeah. But that six foot eight guard, I mean, I want to see how that goes. It, it all depends on what team he goes to. Uh, also, that's one thing with the NBA. Like, even if you have your superstar, it could be the same position as your round pick, and it wouldn't matter. They can move the you know the pick around to play right, uh, play in the right position. It's not the same. It's not like the NFL where you may have the best player available. You already have a good player at that position, so you kind of pass on them type of deal. In the NBA, you can pick whoever and make them fit wherever. Um, so okay, Cunningham is projected number one pick, or at least up there. And I'm not just giving out that name because I'm looking at a list or anything, <laughs> but just the whole six foot eight bigger combo guard. I, I, I think he, um, he has the potential to, uh, to be great in this newer NBA. That's that's constantly changing because before it was it. It's still shooting a lot of threes, jacking up threes, percentages and analytics and that. But now with LeBron, he's the point forward uh, for when he needs to be. Scottie Pippen kind of really started all this, but it's starting to come back with Zion and that six foot eight guard. And also like Ben Simmons, a, a taller um, point guard and stuff like that. I think if you could get that side size. Uh, with decent offense and decent on and good uh, defense, I think that's a, uh, I the the point guard position is going. I agree because you look at point guard position, Lamelo Ball for guard, for example, he's at six eight or six seven, six eight or whatever. Mm-hmm. He can handle the ball pretty well. I mean, Caden Cunningham would be scarier to me than Lamelo Ball is, only because he's six eight, about two twenty. You know what I mean? Right. He, he's a big boy, at six eight, mm-hmm. and he can move. But he can move the ball. He can dribble. He can handle. He can pass. Lamelo is still lethal. Don't get me wrong. He still he still played pretty well. But Jay Cunningham has a bigger 6'8 that can move the ball. But in my opinion, there's two, de- two plays I look at. I'm looking at Evan Mobley from USC, uh, the center. He's a uh, seven foot tall, around 215, 220. He's, he's a good rim runner. He can, he can run to the rim, everything. He can check the paint. I believe he averaged uh, 2.6 blocks per game with USC. So it's pretty damn good. And also, I'm going uh, off the mat, uh, Jalen Johnson. Not because he played for Duke. I mean, he didn't play for Duke for a full year anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter. But the dude is a good two-way player. At 6'5", 220, he's a good two-way player. And I think that's really valuable in the league right now, especially those two-way players, you know, 3D players. But he's a better uh, – he could be a three-level scorer. He's not a three-level scorer yet, but he can be that three-level scorer and play his great defense other than So he could be a future star, in my opinion, because of the size, athletic ability and everything. But I'm kind of curious to see how these boys play out. Jalen Suggs is going to be an interesting prospect. I'm kind of curious how he's going to play out. But from what I'm seeing, and y'all might disagree, but we're seeing like the second coming of all these previous All-Stars we had in the league. I mean, for example, Kyrie is more like Allen Iverson than anyone wants to admit. All right. Mm-hmm. Anthony Edwards can be a possible Dwayne Wade uh, type of player. You know what I mean? Even uh, LaMelo Ball, his game – Reminds me a little bit of Magic Johnson's passing. I'm not saying he's Magic Johnson, but it reminds me of Magic Johnson his passing and everything. We're starting to see the second coming of these all stars right now, and I'm loving it. I'm really, really loving it. Really, yeah. <laughs> the, the NBA really does lend itself well to seeing young mm-hmm. players replace like older guys, older legends. The NBA does well with that one. Yeah. They, they, the, the next generation, and with the way the game changes, uh, watching them similar skill sets play and evolve and elevate a level of play. I like it a lot, man. Uh, the Jalen Green thing I like because 
I don't like college basketball. Uh, I don't like it because, like, even though we got you get good players, you don't know how those guys are going to react to NBA physicality, NBA speed, just the overall way the game is played in the league. It's a much more wide open game. And I think Jalen Green playing uh, G League ball, he gets to play with NBA bodies. He gets to play with guys that have been in the league and they understand and he's getting paid, right? So I, I like the fact that he already has a if you're looking for a kid who's gonna make an immediate impact, Jalen Green's probably gonna be that guy because he's one of the guys that played in the G League. So he already has an, he already has a deep understanding of what coaches are looking for in NBA level play. Exactly. So that mental right. transition for him won't be nearly as big as the other guys I mentioned, Jalen, the Jalen, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coming out of college. You know, I like I mentioned to y'all, man. I'm kind of I, I like having these players who who know they're gonna be one and done. They know for a fact they're gonna be one and done. Going straight to the G League first for their first year. You know, get paid some money, do all this, that, and third. But the rest of the players are going straight to college. I think that brings a more interesting aspect to the game because one, those guys in the G League, we know they're gonna go to the next level. You know, the guys in college, they're working to get to the next level. And boys are fighting harder. You know what I mean? They're hungry. And I think that brings out more competition. On the college side versus mm-hmm. you know, one that does just yeah, well, I'm just here first year, play a little bit, and I know I'm gone. That's it. Right. <laughs> but some of these other players, man, they know it's gonna be there for a couple of years. That brings the competitiveness back to college basketball. And that's what I'm wanting. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's right. and that's the main reason I, I don't watch as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Uh and that's another the main reason. I, another thing that's starting to shift in the NBA is older players are starting to come in. It used to be a knock on you was 21 years old, 21, 22. NBA, pro, NBA GMs would be like, well, if he was that kind of good, then why the hell he didn't come out when he was 19, 20 years old? Now I actually think it's might, it might be a bit of an asset to come in when you're 22 years old, a mature player, a leader, uh, and you're more you're more of a professional-minded player, so the mental transition isn't as big. And a lot of those guys, they also get several years to specialize in what they're going to be in the NBA. So I think, I think the older guys, too, now, you mm-hmm. could take a 22-year-old in the top five, whereas before – it was viewed as more of a kind of a, ugh, I don't know if he was that good. He came out already, you know. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. So I'm I'm really uh, curious to see how this class is going to turn out to be. I think we're going to have some good stars in there. I'm not going to say they're all, the whole entire class needs some stars. But we didn't even mention Luca Garza, but he's projected outside, yeah. of, outside the first round. But if he works on his body, I say that he needs to get on that Kevin Love diet, you know what I mean? If he works on his body, man, I think he can be a force at the next level. But he has to work on himself real quick. But I don't know, man. Do. Some of them some of them sloppy bodies doing all right in the NBA. Like uh um, Jokic. Uh hey, yeah, Nikolai uh, Jokic. Joker. Hey, Jokic be wet uh, up out there with that sloppy body. It's not <laughs> funny get out there. Shit, let me see what I can do, baby. I'm 5'10. I ain't 6'10. But shit, I mean, you know, I, I I can shoot a little bit, baby. Get in, but I can shoot a little bit. You know, you know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> I can move some people around. Make it rain. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Marcus Hall. I could take hey, a while. Marcus Hall had a nice career, and he was never, like, in great shape. I don't think I've ever seen that man a tone in his bicep. <laughs> it's just one, one definition. One, like, not one All strike. The way down. Yeah. yeah. But it worked. <laughs> it worked. Hey, he did what he did, man. He got a ring. Hell, it's hey, ridiculous. Luka Doncic, let's be honest. He still ain't in shape. Hell, he may never be in shape. But he'll still jacking some bullshit, I'll tell you that. Hey, <laughs> you know, hey, look, Harden, don't get me wrong, I, I do think he was wearing a fat suit for the first yeah, man. season. But, like, even when he took it off, like, he ain't the he ain't the slimmest bowler out there. But, you know, big, strong man with the moves, you know. Come on down. Brooklyn, baby. Boop. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey Harden went to New Jersey, bro, and took off his fat suit. And it's <laughs> disrespectful shit in the world. Dude, I'm happy now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, so we're running out of time on this one, y'all. But, hey, that's how it is. NBA draft. I'm pretty sure we have more stuff coming up when these guys do their workouts and you start talking to the GMs and reporters. We'll see how they actually going to project at the next level. So we'll get ready to see that. Hey, but that's how we're getting this one. We out.